Welcome. It is January 2021, and I'm here with Anne. And Anne, I'd like to talk to you today about Six Flags Great Adventure. Um, so for those of you guys who don't know, a little backstory on Anne. Actually, Anne is the one that trained me on the first time um, on Log Ride. So she's a picture pro, and uh, she's a, and that's how actually we met. So just a little backstory there. So Anne, give us a little more. You were starting to tell me right before uh, we started recording that you actually uh, are a professional photographer. Or... I wouldn't quite call it professional, but I certainly <laughs> can be a professional. I once did college oh. for photography, and through being in a small town, I started doing people's weddings every very so often, and it was word of mouth, and then I moved, and I would occasionally get a couple people asking me to do their wedding, and I'd go back down to where I was, you know, from my hometown, and since I moved away, the wedding slowed down, so once we started going to parks, I found Log Ride and started making it my own personal goal to fill out the whole catalog of photos for all the rides. <laughs> awesome. Now, usually uh, when you're talking about amusement parks or theme parks, a lot of times there's a, way, there's a lot of different varying rules. Uh, so I think for the most part, I think most people end up taking pictures then with their mobile phone. Is that... Have you become a mobile phone expert now? I, to give you an idea, when I look for phones, I don't really look for what they can do beyond the camera. <laughs> so yes. you're like your entire phone phone characteristics are revolving around the the lenses and uh, aperture. <laughs> they, yeah, they certainly can because I mean it's more per megapixels and megapixels probably can't go too much further beyond what they are now in phones without them getting thousands upon thousands of dollars more expensive. But, um, when my husband and I are trying to choose our phones to upgrade to, I'll be like, okay, but what's the camera? So <laughs> it's yeah, definitely well, an aspect I because I mean, like, as we were talking about earlier, how, how parks have become so stingy on what cameras are allowed in the park and since my park pass is on my phone and checking into rides and everything's on my phone it's better that than and enjoying my trip while snapping a couple photos than lugging around a huge camera and making it my entire trip yeah to totally understand so so the reason why um i kind of went this direction is because uh you know we we're talking about log rides since um I have an ulterior motive for the great adventure piece is because uh, I've got a goal to go to every single Six Flags this year. Did I, did I tell you that already? I think you did a while ago. All that's, right. That's crazy. okay. So I'm taking my daughter. We're going to attempt to. We're, we're going to see if uh, the if the country allows us to, given the uh, craziness that we still are are dealing with. But um, when it comes to great adventure, let's just say you ran into me at the store and I'm like, Hey, what, you know, what kind of amusement parks do you go to? And you're just going to give me the uh, short, short uh, pitch on great adventure. What, what would you uh, tell me at the store? That if you're planning on trying to do it in a day, I'd make sure you have an entire day. It is a big park. And if you're going in the summer, try and hit it during the middle of the week. Try to have, at all costs, if you don't feel like waiting in line for hours, avoid Saturdays. Uh, but regardless, it's a really cool park. And it's right on the lake. And there's literally something from, for everyone. Because, like you were saying, how King Ka is on your bucket list. Uh, and it's on many bucket lists. And, I mean, it's a, what, a 20, 20, 30 second ride. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, so like we, we have the world record of height and at one point it was the world record for speed. And then we have, you know, the, the kind of babier coaster, if you want to call it a baby coaster, Nitro, which is my favorite, which is, I believe, 240 feet tall. And then you have El Toro, which is everybody's favorite. It is world renowned as being one of the best wooden coasters. And that's right next to King Dakar. Ka. And then you have smaller coasters like the indoor indoor coasters, uh, Skull Mountain, 
and then Harley Quinn's Crazy Train and the first roller coaster that was put into the park, I believe, and certainly the longest standing was the Runaway Mine Train, which is an arrow train. Or is arrow. Every, I think every park, their oldest one, is a, <laughs> is a mine train, isn't it? <laughs> um, but it's, right. the park has so much history and so amazing, amazing love to it. All right, so I'm looking up your stats right now, and it says that you have 13 coasters. That's significant for uh, for a park. And is that 13 including Jersey Devil, or is that 13 without it? I do not think it includes Jersey Devil. Okay. It might. It does. I don't know, but uh, we did talk in our one of our last news shows. Uh, we talked about the actual topping of Jersey Devil, so... We are right there. So, so is it getting exciting since you're that close? Have you seen it? Have you driven by? <laughs> no, I haven't. I don't live close enough to go drive to it. I live vicariously through people who do live close to it and get videos of it. There's one YouTuber who does last year before everything shut down. He was he was doing just about bi-daily or certainly weekly updates on all the construction for the Jersey Devil. Um and he he went and tried to go the day that he thought it was going to be topped off, and then went the next day when nothing happened, and he eventually went on that Monday when it was topped off. I've I've been watching it with bated breath. I I'm so excited for it. It's not even. Funny. Isn't it nice? We got social media. We can we can watch from right? the warmth warmth of our car because their their problem with topping it off was the was uh, the wind. So yeah, but, certainly the wind. All right. So I've besides the oh, I'm sorry. What? So I, I don't know how they're going to handle everything with the snow. We just had a snow storm, if you want to call it that, in the mid-Atlantic. Yeah. We had about a foot or so of snow. Oh, that's a lot of snow. It also says you have 23 flat flat rides. That is a, a lot of flat rides. It's certainly a lot of flat rides. I have – so I didn't start going to Great Adventure until 2018. Uh at first, I only focused on the roller coasters. And then once it started becoming mundane, and it's just like, okay, I can only ride I can only ride Skull Mountain so many times, um, I started, you know, feeling out and riding all the flat rides. A lot of them are kind of just little kitty kind of like Dumbo rides, and you mm. got a pirate ship. and Yeah, so from a stats where, perspective, it says you got five uh, children rides. So that means quite a bit of those uh, flat rides are probably a little above. And that's only the ones that are technically called kitty rides because they have a kitty section. Um, so if those are strictly for small children, then they have the rides. A lot of a lot of the flat rides are more geared towards uh, younger kids. So maybe not little baby rides, but there's a lot of sprinkling of under 10 or so rides for all the other kids. All right. So um, just uh, let's uh, walk, walk me around the park a little bit. What would I expect when I walk, when I walked in? So I would, aside from the fact that great adventure technically has three separate parks because they have the great adventure itself which is the amusement park then they have hurricane harbor which is off to the side it's not attached uh six flags america has hurricane harbor directly in the park that you could just walk into but it's completely separate and the safari which up until 2020 with the pandemic they had created a ride for it so that it was you went you went off into the back corner you got on like a, like a little safari type of vehicle, it was open, open, and you were with a bunch of other people seated, and you'd ride around there. Is that this over? Huge, is it a? Huge, is it off to the side? Yes. So I basically, so you're in the you're in the. So you're in the park, and you start to you basically leave quote unquote the amusement park, and you drive through the safari. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, for that was before, you know, the pandemic and they since reverted, it was the first thing that opened in 2020. They opened the safari back up to be drive drivable again, because it used to be a drive through adventure to begin with. When they opened it, you could drive your own car through it. Um, the problem was a lot of the 
t a lot of times then they get to the monkey area and the monkeys would get on people's cars <laughs> and they would rip <laughs> off, rip off windshield wipers. <laughs> so that and coupled with, I think the fact that they, people wouldn't stop trying to feed the animals. It, they just said enough was enough and made it a, a more of a guided supervised tour. Uh, but it, it's huge. It's, it's ginormous. So those three parks besides it, I would honestly count great adventures. It's a, it's a two day thing. You could certainly do it in one. If, if you didn't, if you just wanted to go and get the credits, you could definitely do everything in a day. It's going to be a long day, but uh, you could spend one day in half the park and then another day in the other half. Um, because when you walk into the entrance, like you, you walk down the main street where all the stores are. Mm -hmm. And once you get to the fountain, it's kind of the dividing point. You can either go left, you can go right. Left is King to Ka, Superman, Green Lantern, El Toro. Oh, what else is there? Bizarro and the Runaway Mine Train. See, Directly you are a coaster enthusiast. Is, that, all your that. examples were all, were all coasters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, on on so on the left side, along with the coasters, I mean, like you have um, what I think it's like a, it's an Air Force base tower. Gentle drop where like you're you're hoisted up, you're sitting on a Ooh. almost so that's, swing. And that, those, those it, are hard to come by nowadays, right? Yeah, and it's, and it's an intimate. And I when I first started becoming an a, an enthusiast, I was just like, wait. Once I started going through log ride and I'm like, wait, this is an intamin? And then I'd keep doing that. Like I kept having that reaction where it was just like, wait, this is an intamin? Not like I didn't realize that the pirate ships, so many of the amusement parks, pirate ships, they're they're intamin. And then this this little like wagon wheel looking ride, nice and tall, sitting sitting up way high. You just drop down like with a parachute, and it's not it's a guided cable drop, so it's not fast. It's it's definitely a tame ride, but uh, yeah, it's not I like a drop tower. A, no, it's not a drop. <laughs> well, there is another drop tower over there, and so you have that, which is like baby's first drop, and then you have right in between King Dakar's, you know, entire ride, you have the world's tallest drop tower, which I believe is Zumanjaro. No, not Zumanjaro. I think that's I think yeah. it's right. Yeah, I think Zoom and Jaro. And it's so one of the first things that made me realize I was I was in it for the long haul is uh I was so afraid to ride King Ka. And my husband and I went on the night before Halloween, 2019. And it was it was spur of the moment. I mean, we live an hour and forty minutes away from it. It was it was spur of the moment, hey. They're giving out a Halloween pin tonight. You want to you want to just go. <laughs> so we did and I had a friend who would not stop pestering me cuz I I saw how talking the guy was and it was just like I can't do it. It's it's no, it's too scary, it's too tall. And he wouldn't let me live it down. So when we since it was spur of the moment, we didn't go with my friend. I was like, you know, let's just do it now <laughs> so he can shut up. <laughs> but the ride broke down yeah. the second Oh, I was second to go. I was right in front of the turnstile. And they were like, sorry, guys, there's too high of a gust of wind, too fast. We have to shut it down for at least half an hour. So, but one of the things that made me even get into that area was I found out about Rolling Thunder, which was their old dueling wooden coaster, which sits, it, it's interwoven. And if, if you look on Google Maps, you can still kind of see the cutout of the trees of where it used to be. Um, and part of, I believe the first drop. Yeah. I think it's the first drop where it, it bottoms out and it starts to go back up is situated directly underneath uh, the final break run. And one of the drops of El Toro. And I found out about it and I was like, I know we're not going to be able to get over to the side of the park later the year because they close it for, for Christmas. So I walked over there and had to walk all that way down Zoom and Jaro's line, which is easily half a mile long, just to look at this piece of track. And it was just like seeing it 
and seeing the history just overgrowing this piece of track and the fact that they kept it there kind of, I know they had to keep it there to keep it for support reasons, but just the fact that it was there, it's just like, this is so cool. Like, look at, look at this history. People wrote on this thousands upon millions of billions of people have ridden on this coaster and it's just sitting here. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? It's cool to find like those little history or the, no little nuggets. So you walked us all the way, you walk in, you go left, and you took us all the way around and talked about all that stuff. Well, what happens if you go right? Right. See, and that's that's what I'm talking about. Just going left, you can spend hours <laughs> on the left side of the park. Whole day it's, on the left it's, side. It's, it's it's a whole half of the park. So I mean, like when you go right, the right is my favorite side. Um and the right has right next to the the Joker is Harley Quinn's crazy train. Fun fact, that was the first ride I ever actually got stuck on. <laughs> it was raining. And as we were just starting to crest the, the top of the hill, I mean, it was only 20 some odd feet, but as we were starting to go down the first drop, everything stopped and we were stuck up there for like 20, 30 minutes. But that's in the, the first time I ever got stuck. So yeah, in the rain. And, and they, since it was drizzling, I guess maybe there was a malfunction, but it wasn't a big deal. They got it moving again and we went through and it wasn't a big deal, but the right side is my favorite because it is, it's so wooded and it has my favorite rides. Uh, during two days after Christmas, we finally rode the Ferris wheel, which again, I had that dawning realization. Wait, this is a Schwarzkopf. <laughs> like they don't have anything other Schwarzkopf in the park. But their Ferris wheel oh, yeah. is like well, they don't have those... the roller coaster or yeah. anything for it. So, and it, it's I believe at one point it was the world's tallest Ferris wheel. I don't know if that still holds true, but it's certainly one of the tallest. Uh, um, cool. And you get magnificent views. Oh, my my so, son loves Ferris wheels. We can't go to Six Flags St. Louis, which is our home park, without him riding on it. He loved, he would he would go like two or three times the, a trip if we would let him. Cute. Yeah, they're cool. He, he they're fun that. little rides. I mean, I don't make too much time or effort for flat rides unless roller coasters are just that busy, or if it's off season where. Uh, most of the stuff is closed except for the flat rides. Cause I mean, I know when it comes to winter, King Ka, El Toro, Bizarro, they're all closed. Uh, is that because of the temperature or do, yeah. is it like they just close off part of the park? Yeah. Um, Six Flags St. Louis is like that too. When it gets cold, they only ride, there's certain rides they can't, like the boss, they have to close the boss so that it gets cold. Yeah. It's, it's kind of confusing which ones they choose, which ones they don't. I mean, I can understand King De Ka very, very easily because I could not even imagine riding 120 miles an hour open-faced in freezing bitter cold. Uh, but to the right, to get back to my point, because I ADD, like it's my job, um, to the right, it, it kind of, and I think the reason why it's my favorite is it makes a loop. Um, yeah. because if you, if you walk past the fountain, you go past the, uh, membership building or the photo building, whatever they deem it that year. And you can take an immediate right. And it takes you, uh, through trees. And I believe near where it used to be Robin and the, the chiller. Um, I had never went to the park when it was there, but I think that's around where it was. And, you kind of go through, I think, movie town and where the catering pavilion and stuff is. Um, and you you go through it and you go now towards where the Wonder giant Wonder Woman um, spinning wheel thing is. Uh, That's and the you get to my favorite. It. Yeah, definitely is. Um, <laughs> you get to my favorite ride, which is Nitro. Um, it's certainly not... The best coaster on earth and i'm i'm sure i will get better rides i mean uh last year was the first year i went to hershey park and i know this is going to be controversial to say but sky rush is one of my favorite roller coasters everyone calls it thigh crush because of the restraints and and for other myriad of reasons um that's okay so, that's, you don't have to worry about anybody what anybody else thinks all you have to worry about oh is yeah no i don't i mean you can hate it all you want. That's fine. That's one less person in line that I have to compete against. 
<laughs> you're, you're like, yes, please don't like this ride. Exactly. It's like, okay, you don't like it. Don't come back. That's cool. I'll get back in line. Don't have to worry about you. Um, so Nitro is definitely my favorite. Um, it, it is the first, besides King Ka, it was the first big obstacle coaster I finally decided to ride. Uh, the whole time I'm standing in line for this, and since it was summer and pre-pandemic, it was just staring at this huge gargantuan lift hill, watching these trains slowly crawl their way up. And I'm, I'm like... I'm freaking out. My, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Why am I here? Why am I doing this? <laughs> and then the second I got off, and and my favorite thing about it is as we're going up the lift hill, I look at my friend, the one that liked to tease me, and I was just like, what am I doing? And he, he looked at me, laughed, and said, statistically shortening our lives. Now let's do this. <laughs> so... Oh, All right, well, I, I just, I just looked it up while we're talking. It's 230 is the height. It's 230, uh, 230. is the height, and it goes uh, 800, uh, 800, sorry, 80 miles an hour. <laughs> yes, it's incredibly fast. Um, so, yeah, I was off by 10 feet. I don't know why I keep thinking 240. Um, but, yeah, two, 230 feet, and it's like one of the things with Skyrush, and it's just only, I believe, 20 feet, 20 feet shorter and but it goes up the lift hill like 25 miles an hour since it's a it's not a chain lift it's a cable cable drive it's a cable cable drive lift so you you're up and over before you even have time to take three breaths um yeah whereas nitro no, they want to no make sure you, no no anticipation whatsoever the ride is up and over and done before nitro is even reached from station to the top of the lift hill and is a slow agonizing terrifying experience if you've never been on it and i've i've desensitized myself so now i get to enjoy the nice slow calm lift and i get to look over to where like the employee buildings and the, the storage sheds and stuff are where they have uh, -huh. uh pre like ride parts and stuff like that and i got to look over to the left watching jersey devil be built as time went on uh but my the best all-time ride and that's why it, it it will forever sit at my number one and the reason i love nitro so is so much is because it it dips and dives through the the woods because it, it kind of disconnects itself from the rest of the park and just goes it disappears yeah. you can't see buildings you can't hear other rides it's just it's its own thing and on i guess that the Halloween Eve Eve <laughs> it was the, the 30th of October. It was kind of foggy added, added to the help of the fact that they had all these fog machines going, but it was a natural fog too, because once you got away from the park that stopped and it, it was just so dark and we're just diving in the darkness through these woods and with, you know, glint stuff light glinting off the lake and everything it was just it was a heavenly experience and Man, ever since me, then it has sat, sat you got home. me you definitely got me pumps to go so uh give me some actionable tips so let's just say i show up you said i'm gonna need at least a full day if not two uh i'm there i'm there at rope drop uh what what do we uh where do you where do you send me <clears throat> That's a great question. Um, I mean, low, capa it's low capacity the rides you mentioned is the parachuters, the parachutes. And then you also said King de Ka was uh, right, but that's way on the edge. So it's way on the edge. And that's honestly part of the reason, and I will get back to your question. That's part of the reason I don't like going to the left because it's so it's broken up by a Creek. And then between El Toro and King de Ka, there is no path. There, uh, there's a short path during the summer, but you still have to walk almost to the main path to get to it. So to go from King Ka to El Toro, which are arguably the most long queues, you have to walk all the way down to the main strip, which I think is called the boardwalk, and then walk over and then all the way back down to either King Ka or El Toro. So it's super frustrating being on that side. So if if you're there early, 
and you're trying to knock out credits and you're trying to get, you know, more enjoyment out of your day and a little more slack and time, the very first thing you should do is go to El Toro or King Ka. If you can get flash passes, get them for either of them, especially with how uh, undependable King Ka can be. So if you make that your number one prerogative, maybe you can hit it, hit it before it breaks do down. You, do either one of those, are there any rides that are always running right at rope drop, whereas other ones, it takes them like, you know, 30 minutes to get going? It's a great or question. Is that, is that like an El Illinois Toro thing? Have its, the what? I'm sorry. Uh, I said, or is that like an Illinois thing? I, sometimes we'll go to Six Flags, St. Louis or Chicago, and some of the bigger rides, it's like they're just testing them. It takes them a while before they're running people. El Toro is definitely that way. Um, I've I've gotten there where they're still just testing it, and they're, they say it's not ready yet, and so we have to, you know, because we do the exact same thing I was recommending. We we enter the park and it's like, all right, let's go hit El Toro. Oh, it's still testing. Okay, well, let's walk over to King Ka. Oh, well, it's all right. So. <laughs> okay. so, um, the good thing with hitting El Toro first is it is directly across that little creek from Bizarro, which I only just learned the other day was. B&M's first floorless. I had not even a slight idea. And I know it used to be called Medusa. And I learned that they renamed it to Pizarro, trying to get it popular again. It's still a solid ride. I mean, I, I know that it's it's an old ride, but it still rides smooth. And it. I know this shouldn't be the first thing you suggest for a ride, but it doesn't hurt. Especially <laughs> for well. b and well, my daughter's one of my daughter's favorite rides is the Ninja at Six Flags St. Louis. And that, that ride gets some serious hate. So I totally understand. That's got to be better than Ninja, I'd imagine. Exactly. And it, I mean, and it's to each their own because like like your daughter, if Ninja's her favorite ride, that's awesome. I mean, other people can walk away hating oh, it for Sky Rush. It, it is not her favorite ride, but her favorite ride is American Thunder. Which is a uh, which is a small wooden one, and uh, she also enjoys the beast. Or, or it's, oh, sorry, it's the boss, not the beast. She hasn't been on too yeah. too many. So, all right. Well, I think you oh, gave sorry, me shorter. Say what? She's shorter, so I mean, like she can't handle. I know. I know. It kills me that she can't ride Batman yet. <laughs> I know those clones get 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 some hate too, but I just I, I really enjoy a good Batman clone. Yeah. I don't care if it's cool. Right. I mean, Batman, uh, it took me a while throughout the season. I mean, like this is certainly a weird season. So we'd, we'd go for a few hours, hit a couple rides and then, you know, so it, it took me until the last trip to go and ride Superman ultimate flight. So, I mean, I, I just kind of get a handful of rides in and then I'd be like, all right, it's getting too crowded. Let's go. Is that the, yeah, I, I totally get it. Yeah. We're, we're in that same boat too. We always open, we make sure we open the park up because it seems like it gets busier as the day goes on. And uh, like right now, like you said, when it gets to where it starts getting congested, we usually cut out a little early. So, well, you gave me a ton of tips, which I absolutely love. So uh, is there anything uh, you, you forgot to mention? Any tips, uh, any other tricks or things we should look at when we're coming to visit? Get some food beforehand. I mean, as uh, we could, you don't we have the, meal plan. the perks of being a member, stuff like that. Oh, so you def then I think one thing I su would suggest is over near Bizarro and Runaway Mine Train. They have, uh -huh. have thank you. It's the big wheel, best of the West, something like that. It's It's a little tucked away hidden little restaurant that since no one really goes over there because it's next to the kitty section, there's not much else to do. It is such a, a hidden little gym, gem, and I'm almost kind of afraid to say it because like we found, we went in there, it was middle of summer and we tried to go to the granny's kitchen. It was, which is one of the biggest restaurants in the park. And it's just, oh, it was going to take us 
almost an hour to get our food. And so we're like, no, nah, let's let's find something else. And found that they yeah. had pulled pork mac and cheese, which was delicious and to die for. And like you get to sit out on their little balcony that looks over the lake or the creek. It was yeah. just so yeah. cool. So, so that the West. I think that would be my recommendation. Right. Is yeah. Best of the West. We're, Try we're, and find some food or hit hit the Burger King or the the Wawa that's just down the street from the park. Awesome. Well, uh, is there any, uh, any, um, I guess, uh, any, uh, social media folks that have been, you, were, you mentioned earlier, uh, somebody that you've been following that was doing all of the videos, anybody you want to do a call out for a channel that we should watch? Specifically for, uh, I definitely I like airtime thrills. If you if you want to learn about <laughs> roller coasters, he's like so, the original. He is the original, and I mean that's he helped me get so into roller coasters. But at the same time, now that I've gotten my own experiences and gotten my own opinions, he, he can he can be a little little like too straight about it like it's just like airtime or nothing if it, if it doesn't have airtime i'm not about it i mean well i mean his airtime thrills i mean it's right there in his title <laughs> and, and i can't i can't knock him for it but he helped me learn a lot about coasters um and one of the other youtubers uh he's the one that kind of focuses on the area i'm in <clears throat> he's the coaster spot so he he'll go and get video of all these no name parks like he'll get video of Knobles, uh, Idle Wild over and in central, western central Pennsylvania, along with uh, Lake, Lake Mont Park, where I think uh, Leap the Dips is, which is the oldest roller coaster in, in the world. Um, so Pennsylvania has a lot of history, and so does New Jersey. I'd check out the, uh, the coast, or the shore, as they call it. Um, the shore. See what little parks they have. Yeah, we call it the beach. They call it the shore. That's New Jersey. Awesome. What are you gonna do? Awesome. Well, uh, Anne, thanks for the time. Uh, it's been fun, uh, and I'm sure we'll we'll see more of you. Uh, you'll probably, as I know, uh, we'll probably have many more sessions when it gets closer to talking about new functionality within Log Ride and whatnot. So I'm sure you'll be back. So I appreciate you. Uh, coming online and letting us uh, test out some of our tech. <laughs>